Welcome to Inside the Artist Studio. I'm Rose Frederick, and I am here with Amy Logason, my dear friend who is down in the middle of nowhere, Crestone, Colorado. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. It's been a while. It has been a while. So um, I was down at um, Zapata Ranch uh, um, a few months ago, and okay, now I kind of get why you want to be there. It's magical. It's magical. Yeah. 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 Pretty stunning land landscape, mountains, valley. Yeah. Well, and then the great sand dunes are just there. Like that's a, that's an oddity too. Yeah. Just South of us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's amazing. And it's kind of, it's one of those places too, that, you know, when you get out of the city and the traffic and all that kind of stuff and you get there and you just start to take some deep breaths it does sort of play on your mind like what's happening to me here you know almost in a magical realism kind of way you know yeah, yeah. and a little altitude helps right yeah right right so, yeah, <laughs> lack of oxygen and so <laughs> right. <now>, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it's humbling, right? The the oh. landscape here, the Grand Mountains, the Sangre de Cristos and the San Juans, either side flanking us and then the valley. And so it and puts you in place. And then the the night skies are incredible. Oh, gosh. And your uh, your um, wonderful partner, Steve, uh, is is a amazing photographer. So it's always a treat when I see his his photos pop up on social media because He's, they're just incredible. Um, and it He's is really, it's, it's enticing. It's quiet though. Has that changed your work? Um, on some level, I guess it has, I think it's still percolating in. We've been yeah. here for four and a half years. We've had, Stephen's had this property for over 30 years oh. and then finally started building just four and a half years ago. And so yeah. living here, and so there's still, I think things are still percolating in, but yeah, the quiet is important, mm -hmm. uh, reflection, yeah. uh, and then just uh, the grandness of this landscape here. Mm -hmm. um, well, and you, so, it, and you work in clay and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you were talking about at one point, looking at some of the clay that is there yeah. and working with that as well. Yep. So that's an ongoing learning and trying to find um, wild clay deposits. And mm. so I haven't quite discovered exactly where those are, but definitely making connections here in the Valley. Yeah. So that's a, um, these are sacred lands where you are really to indigenous people. Okay. And so the clay is, uh, is very it's, sacred as well. So yeah honoring that and mm -hmm. yeah. which also uh, probably adds to you know the some of the difficulty in actually finding it correct yeah. correct staying within families or within yeah yeah within, yeah so wow. and I yeah and I think so we'll see we'll see how you know these connections start to unfold and mm -hmm. But, that, but then it but then it really gives it a sense of um really honoring it and acknowledging it for the sacredness that it is, which is yeah. pretty special to how create many, with art. Do, how many tribes were there in in your which I tribes? You know, I don't know all of them. I'm not very good at it. I know you I believe um uh, uh Navajo mm -hmm. Cheyenne, but I'm yeah, I have them all in my the mind, so I don't want to dishonor. Yeah. Anything, so I'm not familiar with all of them. Mm -hmm. So that sounds right, yeah. though. Yeah, um, you for sure, Danae. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. Cheyenne, right? And then, um, and those, right? So yeah, because it's also it's not just the clay for pots and 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 all of that kind of earthenware, but also you know, the, the sheep and the wool and, uh, weavings too, from that area. It's very rich. 
in art and culture and um you know that native spirit yeah i yeah. bet that's so inspiring for you yes because yeah. i think you have like you have a lot of artists that i know um like every time a text pops up or an email pops up there's always with gratitude or there's always gratitude in there and it is that like you have such a deep level of sensitivity to wherever you are and also like your text messages pop up sometimes on my phone when I am like they've popped up when I've been crying or when I've been up against something so hard and just like very upset or frustrated. And then all of a sudden your text pops up. So, you know, and maybe it's just a coincidence, but sometimes it's like, is she watching me? Is she feeling this? How does she know? <laughs> How does she know? Um, but, but I think that also shows in your work and I want to do a screen share. Okay. Because I want to show the work that we are going to be getting um, at for for this naturalism now show that you are very much a part of. And this piece and another one, this is kind of a departure for you in a sense, because these are going to be wall mounted. Good. Yep. Yep. So I'm really excited about this. I'm excited about this, these groupings that are coming out and um, and playing with that high relief off of a wall mm -hmm. instead of standing um, on a mount or base. So, yeah. And I'm excited to hang these actually because, um, you know, there's going to be so much to play with with light and reflections. And the shadows, right? I love, I love that light and shadow play um, with sculptural work. So this is really exciting to sort of see how um and in different settings right i mean depending on where it's hung and whether and the groupings can be rearranged which i love too yeah uh, yeah. yeah so so i would love for you to talk about influences because um your work is equus you that is that is always at the center um yeah of your work and um I, I would love for you to talk about in kind of a broader context of art historical as well because you have just this rich history of knowledge to to go from um but talk about this herd would you please and inspiration well, and horses play, as you mentioned, just an important part of my life since a young age. And so my own personal story with a horse in my life, a couple horses in my life, but one in particular, and then at coming into forward into my adult and my art. Um, and then, as you mentioned, sort of connecting then with um, the artists that came before me, have come before me for so long and um you know i think also of this uh, artifacts definitely inspire me um those artists that we don't know throughout time and uh some of the cave paintings and cave mm -hmm. sculptures some of the oldest artifacts we have found um and there's one of course of a horse and so i i feel this herd coming forward into this contemporary is is a nod reaching back in time to connect with those artists long ago and bringing them forward into um, these wall pieces, which I think of the cave, the cave ca carvings and the cave drawings mm -hmm. and coming into dimension into a space. So, oh, wow, that's really lovely. Um, and so, too. I, you always sort of exaggerate the form or you, you kind of take liberties with the form in a sense. And, mm -hmm. and this piece, even more so, I think, um, it feels like you've really um, thought about how this is going to play on a wall. 
versus mm -hmm. being on a pedestal, which is traditional of how we've displayed your work. So talk to me about that a little bit. Um, and I like to, I guess, with the horse form not being detail fully, yeah, going more towards, I'm going to step back and say, like artifacts that have been weathered by time, I sort of like that refinement of form. We can re recognize it as horse, but all the details aren't there. Um, and so um, I think playing with that and what I loved do about this series that I'm doing is I'm doing them pretty fast, um, working them, and then I'll refine them some, but really getting the gesture of horse and movement, trying to get sense of movement in the piece. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that's what I've been really loving about this series of works of just, um, uh, yeah, yeah. We're pretty fast so then that maybe that does that answer the question rose i think yeah. and, uh, you know really sort of playing i know the horse form and it, a lot of the form of the horse comes to me from memory yes i have i don't have a horse in my life right now but i reach out i have friends i go to zapata oh. ranch i go to right i connect with horses um on a regular basis and i have the you know i sometimes work from photo and stuff like that but a lot of it is from my my knowing of the horse form from when I had a horse, when I was brushing him, when I was riding him, mm -hmm. and just that connection with horse physically and bringing that memory into each piece. Um, and yeah. so working, and I love the clay medium, both having that, that also ancient medium. Yes. Found in artifacts, right? We're talking about the sacredness of the clay, the clay medium, the, yeah. the clay. And then, um, and then finding the horse form in that. Um, now this one, and I love what you're saying. Okay, so a couple things. One, clay is additive. Um, yes. uh, stone is reductive, and so you're you're this additive process, starting with this lump of just stuff, mm -hmm. and then making it into a dialogue or a conversation. Yes. Um, and so this one, the, the, the piece we just saw was a little more grounded in the land. This one is in the sky. Inspired by the clouds, mm -hmm. the clouds that come through the, the valley, very dramatic mm -hmm. thing because um, the horse being such an important subject matter for me and sort of the thread that connects all my work yes. um, is, and I look for it in the landscape. And I think this Grand Valley, I see it in the mountains. I see them in the clouds. I see them. And so it's bringing that um, image that I see forward into a physical form in my my works in clay. You know, and, and it's interesting too, to me that sculpture has a weight to it a physical weight to it and, and so to create a sculpture that has motion and has like a lift to it like a cloud and a sky feel to it that's quite a it's quite an accomplishment I think you achieve it with this piece thank you thank you and I've, and it'll be so fun to play with the shadows of this piece on the wall it's just dreamy it's really dreamy. <laughs> yeah, this one is going to be very fun to play with. And, you know, okay, so um, as someone who loves to move art around her house and move furniture around, I mean, I've, I've thrown my back out at the moment. And so uh, that's how much I love it. But also <laughs> need to realize that I need to actually um, wait until my sons come home from school to <laughs> do some of it. Um, but this piece truthfully can be moved around on a wall yeah. and and played with in a number of of different ways which makes it even more exciting i think and so they could be one small you know one grouping sort of like what's photographed here mm -hmm. or broken up into smaller groupings 
in different ways. So I love that. I love that play too. And not just, so me as the artist creating it, but then Rose, you as the curator or somebody mm -hmm. who owns this piece playing with that in their space. I love that. Yeah. So. Oh, it's just wonderful. And also let's just, let's just talk briefly about um, the uh, glaze. Mm, and this is a fun, I love this glaze. Um, just a combination of different glazes that come together. And then you've got the, the blue gray and then the whites. Um, and I feel came out very successful. Now, you know, every time <laughs> you never know sometimes what you're going to get, even though you do a lot yeah. of test tiles. And so oh. sometimes the magic in the kiln, I feel at times when they come together and they become their gems because sometimes there's pieces that the glaze combination just doesn't work. And even again, you test it, you try it. And then for whatever reason, it doesn't come out. And also you're doing a test tile, maybe on something that's a little bit flatter. I try and do a form. So I get an idea more on a larger scale of piece to see what the glaze will do. But, and it's, it's about being in the moment mm -hmm. and application of glaze and glaze and sometimes thinner, thicker. And the, the combination here is that the, the blue grays that are coming out um, a little bit thinner and then the thicker, the glaze are the white areas. So, oh, so oh. it's a really fun glaze to play with. Yeah. Very nice. It settles over the piece and how the glaze melts in the kiln glaze firing mm -hmm. instead of how these color patterns come out. So there's a lot of what I love about working in ceramics. Um, I like to control certain things, but there is a practice and probably of letting go, of yeah. control it to a certain point. And then you just have to trust the universe mm -hmm. and, and let go and see what happens. Um, very so Zen of you. Well, very Zen and it's appropriate for where we live, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to show this third piece. Okay. I absolutely adore these. Um, uh, these are like stick horses. Yep. Inspired by a stick horse. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that horse, stick horse. And this one, I love how this one came together. It, it doesn't have the physical stick, but sort of that um, mount that suggests that, but then it becomes a bust. It becomes something yeah. classical, a classical bust. And uh, thus the name philosopher on, on yeah. this one sort of a noble creature and yeah um and, and I'm grateful my husband being my photographer of my work grateful for my husband Stephen for helping and for taking photographs of these pieces and also have been running titles by him so it's sometimes nice to bounce ideas off of or another from outside not in your head <laughs> trying yeah. to figure out what to title a piece yeah. and so it's fun to bounce things off. So he helped yeah. me come up with this title, which I like, you know. Well, and you, so I always love, you always surprise me. Okay. So I love, like the mounts on your work um, are important, right? Yeah. And I've seen a number of different ones that you've come up with for these kind of stick horses, um, but also finding antique uh, parts and pieces and yeah. it really just, it's just, which comes first, like in that, I know in this one, the horse, but, but when you find these, like, do you find an old antique thing and it works on your mind or? Yep. Sometimes. So I've had pieces that are old vintage casters, mm -hmm. uh, wheels. And so I've created a horse and a couple horses around those vintage casters or a plow disc or mm -hmm. so um, different. This one, yes, the horse head came first, but it was a uh, created um, as sort of a uh, with a series of the stick horse idea, hobby horse idea. Mm -hmm. um, and so then this with the way the glaze came out, the piece, the finished piece sort of also spoke to what kind of base it needed, mm. which is fun. So there's different ways that I play. Either it's an artifact, something I've found, um, or the ceramic piece comes through and then 
I'm able to find the right, and sometimes it takes a while to find the right oh. for it. But they're, yes, they're a very important part of the piece as a whole. Yeah. Help the story of the piece. So, yeah. um, Amy, this has been so wonderful. Thank you for taking your time to talk to me. And so you are you are going back and forth between Crestone and Denver, I think. So you will be there for our opening? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. So you can see Amy um, in December, and I bet we can get her to come back up for our January show as well. Um, so Amy's going to be a naturalism now. And as we were talking before, your work is also belongs in contemporary realism as with so many of the artists that we're we're working with um but i'm i'm really grateful to have you in naturalism it's just a terrific conversation from the clay to the imagery to you know how you are rethinking you know the horse which is just such a major piece of the puzzle out here in the western united states um but amy thank you so much for being here i appreciate it Thank you, Rose. <laughs> you in the quiet and when I get a sense of mm, something's going on with you, I'll be reaching out. Oh gosh, yeah. I know. I just, <laughs> I know there's like a, a message pops up and, and, and you know what? It always just makes me think, take a breath, yeah. just take a breath. It's going to be okay. Feel the gratitude, you know, get into that beautiful Zen moment and it's going to be okay. <laughs> and so Which, much gratitude to you, Rose, for all you do and for this. So, so thank oh. you. Exciting things that are unfolding. We have a lot of great stuff oh. unfolding. Yeah. That was exciting. So, well, you know and, what? Same to you because, Amy, you are one of those artists. You wear your heart on your sleeve and you are always authentic to the work and to what you're putting out there for us. And um, it's just, to me, it makes your work so collectible because not only is it beautiful, but you just want to wake up with it every day. And it just reminds you to take a breath, I think. And it reminds you of, I think in my mind, because it's, it is a throwback in so many ways to art history, to cave paintings, to those Etruscan works, to these beautiful found things from thousands and thousands of years ago, you know, that, we can look back at humanity. Your work is your work is that reminder for us. I think that we're part of this very long cycle of life. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. I'm wishing you a very happy holiday, and I will see you in you. December. Yes. And I hope all of you listening and watching will come out and meet Amy and see the work and everybody else and um, go to gallery 1261 to get more information and the art soul, more information there well as well. And Amy, once again, thank you. And um, give that sweet photographer of yours a big hug for me. Well, and you give your family, your boys, a big hug and happy holidays and Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Same to you. Okay. Take care, Amy. Bye. Bye.